Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another new Blue Effects tutorial. And in this lesson, I want to show you a great reason not to leave the comfort of your NLE to do some really cool primary and secondary color correction. New Blue Effects' ColorFast is a great tool that will quickly become your go to effect when doing all of your necessary and stylistic color correction inside of both your NLE and your compositing application. As you can see, we have two different types of shots that you might run into in your day-to-day -day editing work. The first one, the sunset, is something that we're going to color correct to give it that Hollywood feature film look. And the second shot, our cutaway of kids playing at a playground, obviously has a big problem with it, as the cameraman's camera was totally out of whack on the day of the shoot, and the only way to fix it is to give it a little bit of love, and of course, a little bit of New Blue Effects' color fast. Okay, so let's alt tab into Avid's Symphony, obviously a command tab for all of my Mac friends out there. And why don't we start out here with our sunset shot. And again, we're gonna be creating that very cool Hollywood style, uh, very saturated sky and sort of a very dark foreground uh, rock element here. And it's a very, very easy effect to create using color fast. So let's hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to mark this entire clip. I'm gonna hit B on the keyboard to edit that clip into a new timeline. And let's hit Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac. And to get to Color Fast, very easy. What you're going to do is just navigate all the way down here to the new blue Color Fast uh, category. We're going to take Color Fast. We're simply going to take it over here, drag it, and drop it onto our shot. And you'll see we're ready to hit Shift and Y. Now, Shift and Y is my shortcut to step into effects mode. Now, if you don't have effects mode mapped on your keyboard, very easy to get to. You can find effects mode right here or you can find effects mode right over here. These are both standard uh, composer layouts, so you can find effects mode no problem. But again, my shortcut Shift and Y uh, on both Mac and Windows. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna separate the foreground from the background. Now, how we're gonna do that is with a mask. Now, how we actually achieve this mask is very easy. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom here. You'll see right down here I have a shape mask. And the shape mask is determined by these four points right here. Now for me to set this up properly, I actually need to zoom back a little bit. So I'm just gonna do that. I'm just gonna zoom back just like such. And what I wanna do is I wanna set this up so that my upper left is outside of the frame, upper right is outside of the frame. And we're just gonna set these bottom two up sort of on the horizon right here. I know you're probably thinking, well, how do you get in and actually be very precise with how you lay these out? Well, it's actually very easy. What I'm gonna do is just scroll back up a little bit and you'll see right up here, above my luminance range, we have a section that says secondary color correction, which is what we're gonna be doing. And it says show mask. Now the question is what mask do I actually wanna see? Do I wanna see the highlights in the shot? Very cool, I can see what the highlights are simply by looking at what is covered in red here. If I want to see the mid-tones, again, what is red? You see we have a lot of mid-tones here. Now, as far as the shadows, we can pretty much figure that one out. It's the rocks down here at the bottom. But what we actually want to see right past skin mask, and I'm going to get to skin mask in just a second, is the shape mask. Now, you'll see that right now the shape mask is an oval that's sort of contained by these four points, and I don't want it to be an oval. So what I'm going to do is just navigate right back down to the bottom, and I'm just going to take the curve and set the curve to be nothing. And we're just gonna set the feather to be a little bit higher here, just like such, and I need to bring this down a little bit. Very cool. I think we're looking pretty good. Now the last thing I need to do, and this is probably the most important step of the entire thing, is I need to enable the shape mask. Now you're gonna notice that nothing has really happened because I need to come up and I actually need to just turn off my show mask because I just wanna see everything very regular. Now again, this is a mask, so what we've actually done is separated the primary color correction at the bottom here, below, outside the mask, from the secondary correction, which is gonna happen up here contained inside the mask. So let's set this up down here at the bottom because I know that we wanted to crush these blacks a little bit so that this isn't gray, this is actually black. So let's start up at the top and what I'm gonna do is just take some film gamma and just add it in there, just darken those rocks up, very nice. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna navigate right down here to the bottom and what we wanna do is we wanna get in and add some saturation in here. Now you'll remember I told you at the beginning when I was going through the different masks, we have highlights located right up here at the top, pretty much everything that's not blue. And if I come to see the mid-tones, there's the mid-tones right there, that's pretty much everything that's blue. And I really want that blue to stand out more so than I want everything else to stand out. You'll remember, if we take a look at the shadows, the shadows were really just the rocks down here, which we've already taken care of. So let's just turn this off for a second. I'm gonna come down to the mid-tones and I'm gonna take the saturation. We're just gonna start dialing it up here. 
And you'll see, the farther I bring it up, I can bring it all the way up to 100, the more blue we get. I know you're probably thinking, well, you know what, that doesn't really look like that much of a difference. But believe it or not, it's actually a huge difference. I want to show you the before. Look at that. Very washed out, not very blue at all. I'm going to step onto the effect and look at how different that looks. And look at how much better this shot looks now than it did before. And if I want to get in and just sort of bump things up even more, what I can do is just step back into effects mode. This is the frame that I was on. I know that because there's a keyframe here. And you'll remember the only other thing that I can really alter in the top here is the highlights because all the shadows are down here at the bottom. So what I can do now if I wanted to is I can come all the way down here into the luminance range, actually right below the luminance range to the highlights. And I can just add a little bit of saturation if I wanted to. I can even just brighten it up a little bit. You can see right there. I can even dark it down a little bit just to make that blue stand out even more. And look at that sunset now. Look at how great that looks. I'll just step out of it here for a second. There's the before and there's the after. Very, very nice. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to move on to the next example, which is a shot that you're going to be correcting out of necessity because it's a shot that's going to have talent in it. We want to get in, we want to correct that. And you'll remember I showed you in the intro, it was very washed out and the color didn't quite look right. And what we're going to do is we're going to get in, we're going to do a quick color correction. We're going to get in and correct that shot. And I'm going to add a circular vignette around everything to show you how you can take a really, really, you know, not great shot, save it and use it really in any type of production you might want to use it in. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to delete this sequence here. I'll just say delete. And we're obviously going to need our shot to work with. So let's come over here to our badly shot footage, you know, appropriately titled here. Again, not looking quite right. It's looking a little bit green. Everybody's kind of washed out. And this shot really needs to look so much better. And again, something very easy to correct very quickly using color fast. Again, I'm going to make sure the entire shot is selected by hitting T on my keyboard on both Mac and Windows. I'm going to hit B to edit that clip into a timeline. Again, back into effects mode. Now again, shortcut control and eight on the keyboard. There we go. There's color fast. I'm going to take it. I'm going to drag it right down here onto the shot. Now with shots like this, the first thing that I normally do when I'm going to color correct something is I'm actually going to get in and do a proper white balance. So what I'm going to do again, step into effects mode, shift and Y my shortcut again, effects mode right here or right here if you don't have it mapped on your keyboard. And I'm going to come right to the top of the effect right here. And you'll see primary color correction. The very first option I have is to pick white. Now I know that over here and what I'm going to do here is just zoom in a bit just so that I can see it. I'm going to hit Control and Alt here just to move the shot over. This here is what is going to be used as my reference for the color correction. So what I'm going to do is simply take the eyedropper. I'm going to come right over here and I'm going to select right there. You'll see it's a little bit grayish, but that is the color of white. And what I'll do is just zoom back here. And now that I've set that to be the color correction color, let's color correct this shot. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to crush my blacks a little bit. Just going to come in. We'll just adjust the exposure a little bit just to bring all the mids up a little bit. Let's bring the brightness up ever so slightly, not too much. And let's just give the shot a bit of saturation back. And what did that take? About 30 seconds to create a great looking color corrected shot? I think it did. Take a look at that now. Very nice. And for me, I normally like to have my blacks crushed a little bit more. So I'm just going to crush it like such. Now, if I wanted to get in and I wanted to do a little bit of a vignette around this, a little bit different than what I did before, but you see that's a very common stylistic thing that people like to do in their shots. Creating a vignette is actually very easy. What we're going to do, again, we're just going to come right down here to the secondary color correction. I'm going to turn on the shape mask and you'll see there's my shape mask right there showing me what's going to be corrected and what is not going to be corrected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and I'm going to enable it. And in this case, I think what I'm going to be doing is inverting it because I want to leave everything here the same. And what we're going to do is we're going to affect just the outside of this mask. Now, I'm going to feather this a little bit more because I want it to be a very gradual thing. And what we're going to do is in this case, I'm just going to darken everything a little bit. So what I'm going to do is come right back up here to the highlights. Let's take its level. We'll just put it down here at about, oh, sure, about minus 50, I think is good. We'll do the same with the midtones. Well, I'm just going to stick it in the ballpark of where I'm going to want it to be and then the shadows. Now I'm just going to come back up. We're just going to turn off our show mask and you'll see now what we had before and what we have now. Now the easiest way to see this is for me to actually come down to something like the shadows. And just grab the level and drag it down and you'll see what's happening in this area here outside the mask. Now if I really wanted to show this, we could just darken this right off. But then again, that's a bit too much. That's why I like to leave it at about the minus 50 mark. 
that's sort of a good place to put a vignette. And again, what we have now is the final corrected shot. And what I'm going to do is just step into it here to show you what the before looked like. Not that good. And then the after looking very, very cool. Now there is one last thing that I did want to mention because there's a cool feature located inside of ColorFast that if you're not looking closely, you're going to overlook it. And it's a fantastic feature. And it's a way to get in and isolate skin tones so that you can keep skin tones a certain color and get in and adjust everything else independently. And I want to just wrap things up by showing you that quickly. Okay, now how we do this is very easy. What I'm going to do is just step back into effects mode by hitting Shift and Y as my shortcut. And what I'm going to do just for the purposes of this is I'm just going to disable my shape mask here just so we can see the entire uh, image here with just the standard color correction. Now, how we set this up again, much like how we set up the other uh, secondary color corrections, is I need to see what's going on with my skin mask first. So what I'm gonna do is navigate right down to skin mask and I'm gonna turn it on and you're gonna see what happens as soon as I do is that the shot almost looks like it's been inverted. And I don't really have a good point of reference to figure out what exactly is going on. Well, that is because if I scroll all the way down here, you'll see that the skin preservation color, the tint color, is pink. Well, we all know that skin is not pink. So what I'm going to do, again, I'm just going to turn the skin mask off. And let's just use our eyedropper here. I'm just going to come back to sort of a, an ideal point when the boy is moving across the screen. That's good. And I think I'm going to use right up here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the color. I'm going to click on the eyedropper, hold it, navigate right over here. And we're going to pick that color right there. Now, if I come back up here to the secondary correction and I show the mask and I say, well, show me the skin mask, you'll see things look very different. Now what I can do if I come all the way down to the bottom here is I'm just going to turn on the actual skin preservation by enabling it right here. Let's just come off and turn off our show mask here. I'll just set it back to nothing. And now what I can do is I can come down and let's just turn the saturation off on the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. But you'll see that pretty much what's been kept is that skin tone. Now you'll see that by selecting a specific skin tone, there are other elements in the shot that make up that color range here. Now you'll see if I come back down, I can actually select different parts of the skin tone like that, and it's gonna change what's going on. Now if I wanna get in and adjust this, maybe I only wanna see, you know, I don't want this to be as broad of a spectrum of the color. What I can do is just come down here and adjust the sensitivity to see more or less. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, you know, I wouldn't really use this, you know, in anything I can think of, you know, so I'm just going to sort of ignore it. But you know what? Not only is this a great technique for getting in and preserving skin tones, but you can also do other very cool effects with it as well. And it's an effect that I like to call the Schindler's List look, and I use this effect all the time. What I'm going to do is instead of choosing a skin tone, I'm going to come back up here and I'm just going to turn on the, uh, right here, I'm just going to come back down. I'm going to turn the skin mask on. And let's just set our saturations back to be 0, 0, and 0 here. So we'll set 0, set 0 again, and we'll set 0 again. And what I'm going to do here, let's see everything's set back to normal. Let's just make sure I actually put that here as 0. There we go, perfect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back down here. And instead of choosing a skin tone, I'm going to choose the color of his shirt right here. Now you'll see that things are going to look very different as soon as I turn this off. Now you'll see because I had the mask on, it actually picked the wrong color. So let's actually just turn our mask off here because I want to make sure that it's going to pick this color yellow. Now, why do I want it to pick this color yellow? Well, let me show you why. Because if you'll remember in the movie Schindler's List, there were certain shots that had things like, you know, a little girl's dress or maybe a rose that you could see in red. Well, I want to see this boy's shirt that's just in yellow. And by going in and selecting just his shirt, what I can do is basically isolate the shirt from everything else and create a very cool Schindler's List type of effect in seconds inside of ColorFast. So I hope this tutorial has shown you what a powerful, powerful color correction tool ColorFast is, especially when you're using it inside of your nonlinear editing application. You know, it's always better to do these type of things inside your editor instead of taking all that time to export clips out to a program like After Effects to do that work. You can do it right here from the comfort of your timeline and show your producer the results in no time flat. So if you have any questions about ColorFast, a fantastic color correction effect from New Blue Effects, you can check it out at www.newblueeffects.com slash so slash color dash fast. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. 
Thanks a lot for watching.